All right, guys. It is Thursday, April 22nd, 2021 at 4.44 p.m. All right, guys. Let's take a look quickly here at these stories. We have NASA to participate in a tabletop exercise simulating asteroid impact. All right, guys. It says JPL Center for Near-Earth Object Studies will lead the hypothetical impact scenario to see how international agencies respond to an actual impact prediction. During the week of April 26th, members of NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office will participate in a tabletop exercise to simulate an asteroid impact scenario. The exercise depiction this fictional event is being led by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, allowing NASA's PDCO and other U.S. agencies and space science institutions, along with international space agencies and partners, to use the fictitious scenario to investigate how Near-Earth Object, or NEO, observers, space agency officials, emergency managers, decision makers, and citizens might respond and work together to an actual impact prediction and simulate the evolving information that becomes available in the event of an asteroid impact threat if it is discovered. The fictitious impact scenario will occur during the 7th Planetary Defense Conference hosted by the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs in cooperation with the ESA or the European Space Agency and will evolve over the five days of this conference starting on Monday, April 26th. Alright guys, so they're uh, going to be simulating the possibility of an asteroid impact. So on April 26th and that week, uh, make sure you guys keep in mind that NASA is practicing the possibility of an asteroid impact. All right, next, NASA's rover makes breathable oxygen on Mars. So now they have the ability to make oxygen on Mars. It says an instrument of NASA's uh, Perseverance rover on Mars has made oxygen from the planet's carbon dioxide atmosphere. It's a second successful technology demonstration on the mission, which flew a mini helicopter on Monday. The oxygen generation was performed by a toaster sized unit in the rover called MOXIE, the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resurgence Utilization Experiment. It made 5 grams of the gas, equivalent to what an astro astronaut on Mars would need to breathe for roughly 10 minutes. NASA's thinking is the future's uh, human missions would take scaled up versions of MOXIE with them to the red planet rather than to try and carry from Earth all the oxygen needed to sustain them. So they're probably going to be with this technology uh, getting oxygen from the atmosphere of Mars instead of carrying that oxygen with them. That is pretty smart. And also makes me think, how long have they had this technology? I always think that. Alright, next. Russia announces the withdrawal of troops from the Ukraine border. Through Defense Minister Sergei Shogu said all temporarily deployed troops will withdraw by May 1st. Ukraine has observed that some of these forces were relocated permanently. So it says Russia's defense minister on Thursday announced the withdrawal of most of the troops it has uh, massed on the border with Ukraine in recent weeks, easing a potential crisis even as military threats against its former Soviet partner remain. I believe that these objectives of the surprise check may have been fully achieved. The troops have demonstrated the ability to ensure reliable defense of the country, Sergei Shargo said during an unannounced trip to the visit of the frontline troops, according to a translation of his remarks. Russia has maintained that the deployment of the border's uh, 120,000 troops, according to Ukraine's estimate, has always served as a military exercise and a response to ongoing massive NATO exercises elsewhere in Europe. Russia's commanders will begin planning the withdrawal by April 23rd to be completed by May 1st, Shogu said. So, thankfully... Uh, Russia's troops are going to be withdrawing from the border, at least partially. All right, next. Israel bombs sites in Syria after a missile lands deep inside Israeli territory near nuclear reactor. So it's saying Jerusalem, a Syrian 
anti-aircraft missile landed in southern Israel early Thursday, setting off air raid sirens near the country's top secret nuclear reactor, the Israel military said. In response, it said it attacked the missile launcher and air defense systems in neighboring Syria. Israel media later described the Syrian missile as an errant projectile, not a deliberate attack deep inside Israel. The army said an initial investigation showed that Israel's own missile defense systems had failed to intercept the surface to air missile from Syria. It says Israeli officials would not confirm the condition of the missile when it landed or the exact location, but it was believed to have exploded before it hit the ground. Israeli news outlets said the missile fell only about 19 miles from Israel's Dimona nuclear reactor and that the military was investigating the future of its defense systems to intercept the projectile. Israel has repeatedly launched airstrikes in Syria in recent years, including at military targets linked to foes Iran and the Lebanese Hezbollah militia, both allies of Syrian President Bashar Assad. Such strikes routinely draw Syrian anti-aircraft fire. Thursday's exchange was unusual because the Syrian projectile landed deep inside of Israel. Syria's state news agency Sana said the exchange began with an Israel airstrike on Demer, a suburb of the capital of Damascus. Demer is believed to house Syrian army installations and batteries, as well as base weapons depots belonging to Iran-backed militias. Sana said four soldiers were wounded. All right, so please pray for those four soldiers that were wounded, and it's an amazing week of news. Um, getting oxygen. To be, you know, to be mined or harvested off Mars, that's pretty amazing. And then we have the possibility of a asteroid, uh, you know, just exercise being uh, played out by NASA. So there's a lot to keep an eye out for. So please pray for the people in the Middle East. Pray for the people still going through the hurricane uh, in the Philippines. And see you guys next time. God bless you guys.